What's up, everybody? Welcome back to IGN's E3 Live Show. I'm Greg Miller, and of course, we have been here all week long bringing you the coolest video games at E3 2014 from the show floor. Now, here's Paul. Paul, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. You've brought a game <laughs> called Codename Steam, and all you need to know is Abraham Lincoln is in it. So, <laughs> just go pre-order it. You don't need to, no, no, no. Real quick, what's, it, summarize the game for somebody who's just learning about it for the first yeah, time. Yes, so, uh, Codename Steam is, a, is primarily a turn-based strategy game uh -huh. with some action elements. So, it is played entirely from a third-person third shooter perspective. And it features, as you have said, a team of special forces which was created by President Abraham Lincoln to fight uh, a uh, mysterious alien menace from outer space. Now, there's a lot... Your story's interesting. I miss the part where Abraham Lincoln did this in real life. Where, where, what are you, where are you drawing from? Yeah, well, uh, it's... Uh, it's actually it's all in the in the some of the s in the secret files of the Library of Congress. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. They're not available to the public. Sure, only <laughs> only big time game developers. Yeah. I understand. Nintendo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, so of course uh, it's a fantasy take on uh, on nineteenth century history. Yeah. Um, we actually don't want to go into too much detail for the moment. Like we want to kind of roll out everything kind of slowly. But what I can say at this point, it's uh, an alternate uh, steampunk interpretation of the 19th century. Um, the British Empire is the greatest uh, superpower in the world, and they get attacked by, by these uh, mysterious aliens. Uh -huh. And you start the game, uh, like your first assignment is basically to go and check out what's going on in London. Okay. So, you don't want to talk too much about the story. No. I get that. Where are you drawing influences from? Because the story, of course, you talk about being steampunk, right? I immediately imagine drab colors, you know, that steampunk. You look at this, though, it looks like a comic book come to life. It's very bright. We have little guys popping up with word bubbles. Yeah. What, where are all your influences coming from? I'm very glad you mentioned that. Uh, when we set, when you set out to do this thing, this was a, a really, really big thing for us to not to do the, uh, you know the monochrome or like uh, sepia colored. Right, right. Punk. Everything's like copper. We wanted we wanted something completely new. So uh, actually, so steampunk is usually associated with the uh, with a with a British Victorian setting, right? Uh -huh. But for this game, we wanted a very American feel. So, I mean, the style of the game we like to call it American streamlined steampunk. <laughs> so, American culture and art and traditions are very colorful and bright and dynamic so we wanted the style of the game to to reflect this so we took our inspiration from okay, American comics and so um, in particular uh, favorites of mine and also the art director such as Jack Kirby oh wow okay. uh, Bruce Tim uh, Mike Mignola people like this and then uh, for the design of the various uh, pieces of uh, like for instance pieces of equipment such as weapons or um, you know, like all the gadgets that populate the world and the architecture. Yeah. We took inspiration from uh, American architectural styles, such as uh, the streamlined modern style and the Art Deco style, which we think is are quintessentially American. So, really, my my feeling with this game was to create a you know like an all American, a genuinely American feeling experience and uh, a very positive feeling American experience because there's a lot you know. Uh, there's a lot of cynicism about right. America in the world and stuff, and we really wanted to avoid all of that. We wanted to to just kind of celebrate what is what is beautiful, what is what is great about America with this game. So, like the American spirit and all that, yes. all the good things that we of, of, as Americans think about ourselves. Yes, yes. I mean, not not what you think about yourselves, but what we think about. <laughs> the good things you think about us. Okay, yes. I can live with that. Um, how do we? How does the game play? We're looking here while you were talking, right? Yes. Like a bunch of people moved around, then it's enemies turn, and now the enemies move around. Yeah. So, well, it, it it follows a classical structure of you know, it's your turn, so it's player turn, enemy turn. But um, as you can see, uh, being a, a bit of a so having shooter elements, uh -huh. uh, we really wanted to avoid that kind of stale 
uh, static feeling of a, let's say, traditional turn-based strategy game where you have your units moving in that very simple uh, sequential style, like sure. you move, attack, move, attack, move, attack. So we wanted to have the more non-linear approach to problem solving that is common in shooter games. So in order to do this, we turned to the um, the well-known system that used it used to be used much more in the past, but not so much in recent games yeah. of action points. So we translate. So is this bar at the bottom there the action points? Yes, exactly. Games? Okay, but they are represented as steam. So uh. so we made the. Um, it was very difficult for me to, to put forward the action point concept to the team. Like, um, we, we tried very hard to, I mean, let me preface this a bit by saying that one of the, not one of the, the, the most important uh, thing about this game, the most, our, our main goal was to create a game that would make new people come into the strategy genre like all sure. those people who feel intimidated by the strategy genre and people who just say this is not for me we want all those people to come in so this was the main goal so in order to do this we try to make everything in the game have a sort of uh, have a tangible feeling to it like be connected to something that you can see be have have a uh, a visual or perhaps sometimes auditory presence. Okay. So in this case, we replace the action points with the steam that is in the backpack of your uh, of your units, and you use this steam to perform the various actions. So my first question, yeah. being a complete noob, is does the, st does the steam action points, does it, does it get spent when you just move your character? Because I see the characters moving, but I don't see the steam decreasing. I'm just I'm talking to you. I don't want to get too distracted from your beautiful face. Well, <laughs> well observed, well observed. So uh, this is something that uh, our main programmer came up with. Um, initially, we had, of course, the, the classical system where as you moved, your steam got consumed. Right. But because the game is played on a 3D map, on a fairly, fairly complex 3D map, and you don't get, in this game, you don't get an overview of the map. Like, right. you have to control everything from the point of the view of the characters gotcha. on the field. So what this resulted in was there is a very important exploration element to the game. You have to scout around first before building a plan. So we discovered that what people would do, they would just, you know, scout around and press the undo button. <laughs> come back to, and this was, was... You know my strategy so well already. No, it was completely natural. Yeah. But it was, it was really, I mean, it broke the flow of the game. It was just like uh, matches would take forever. Right. Like even a small map, you know, would take an hour to clear and whatever. So we, we came up with this idea that, well, if you don't do an action, like if, if you don't do an attack or something, then your steam doesn't get consumed. So you can scout around and you can come back to the position where you started from and then the steam will regenerate. Now, there is a risk associated with this. Of course, if you get caught up by the enemy and you get attacked by an overwatch attack, um, your steam, the steam that you used up to that point will get consumed and you may end up with no steam left in a very, very bad position. So there is risk associated with this. Okay. And now, wh what we just saw here, you walked up and it was save, save and yes. restore, save and restore all. Are you restore? What are you restoring? Uh, <laughs> good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so easy to understand, eh? No, well, I, well, I mean, I'm not playing. I'm yeah, sure maybe, if I had hands-on, yeah, yeah, different yeah. story. I didn't know if so, we were uh, restoring the tanks. Health was. Yeah. So this is this is our way of handling difficulty in the game. Uh, we chose not to have various levels of difficulty because. Um, we felt that, you know, if you, when you start the game and it says, I don't know, in the worst possible sense, it says casual. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, thank you, Paul. Come yeah. on now. Like, it feels almost like an insult to the player. Like, right. you know, we know that you're not good enough, so we kind of made this for you. Sure. Okay? So we didn't want this. We didn't want that screen where you choose a, a difficulty level. So what we do is we try to... Um, manage difficulty dynamically in the game via these checkpoints and what these checkpoints do they allow players so for example if a novice player loses all his units except one yeah. but reaches one of these checkpoints he has the choice of using the medals i mean you can see right now the medals on the screen 
uh, you can use the medals that you collect uh, from the map and from killing enemies to restore um, the, uh, the steam, the, the steam uh, for the unit currently accessing the checkpoint or the HP and the steam for the whole team. So bring everybody back. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and this allows even players of who, who are new to the game and perhaps are not so good, this, this, this probably will help them clear pretty much every map. Okay. However... Here, I, knew there, I knew there was a butt coming if something yes. had to happen. Uh, for hardcore players, they have the choice of not using this. Yeah. They have the choice of not using this system and they get to, to, to conserve their medals. And what, what this gives them is uh, they will get uh, faster access to the, to the later, uh, you know, the, the, power, the more powerful weapons that are later in the game. So in their case, they will get to face the challenge of the latter game with better weapons. Gotcha. So this way, I think we kind of we kind of struck a balance, uh, so everybody can play and enjoy the game. And in my opinion, it doesn't feel unfair, it doesn't feel demeaning, and it doesn't feel cheap either. So you have a choice of not using it. And perhaps I could say again, if you're a very uh, if you're a if you're an experienced player, yeah, and you have you know the layout of the map and stuff, you have the option of doing some really cool things with this because, as I said, it restores all your steam. So you can do like a super run. <laughs> uh, you can just, you, you, if, if you know where these things are and, and, uh, and if you know where all the stuff, all the items that restore your steam and stuff are, then you can just, uh, just go on and on and on and have this like, have your turn just go on for as long as you can possibly as possible, go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I'm actually, I'm looking forward, like this is one of my personal things I'm looking forward to like once we get this out I'm looking forward to all those videos on YouTube sure how clearing fast every map in one turn yeah. can you do it yet uh, maybe on some maps I yeah. mean the game we don't have so many chance related elements but there's a lot of moving pieces at the same time sure. so the game will rarely play the same I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie and say that well it always plays differently yeah, yeah. But it plays differently enough okay. that it won't be easy to just replicate the same movements and get the same results. I mean, the AI will do something different. You will screw up something. Uh, one of your shots may not hit the enemy. Right. Um, so if everything falls into place, yes, I can do it sometimes. Okay. So talk to me a little bit more about the weapons then. That sounds interesting. As you go, you are getting the ability to unlock or purchase new weapons? So... Um, the way we went about the uh, upgrading system in the game is that, um, well, there is no upgrade system. In the sense that as you advance in the campaign, you get more characters, so you get new characters. And each new character will come with a unique weapon that only that character has. Uh, so this is their main, kind of like their, the main differentiation between sure. the character. And they also have a special power that only they can use. And then there's the uh, secondary weapons that you unlock with medals, as I said. So uh, the idea is to not to try to create a an all-powerful character or a cast of. So let's say I have these four guys, and I'm going to upgrade all these four guys, and I'm going to ignore the rest. Yeah, you can't do that. So you have to think of steam as a team that sounded it's yeah that, that sounded a bit nasty that sounded like something you put <laughs> yeah. in your trailer so some maps some maps will prove very difficult with a certain set of characters and weapons so you'll have to think to choose different characters and different weapons you, you always have to think of them as a team and switch between them according to you know to to the to the layout of the maps and the enemies and stuff so that's what we kind of wanted you to focus on, like choose again between tangible, visible things, yeah. which is items and characters. So, and choose the, the best combination for the situation you're in. And we actually give you the option to, so in between maps, you can, you can um, customize your team again. So you always get the option to, to kind of try and, and build the best team and the best loadout for the job at hand. Gotcha. So then the next question is like, it, it's a great looking game. You're using, you. but it's coming to the DS. W w what's the benefits of the DS? Like, why do you, why, why, why was this the right fit for the game? 
Well, in my opinion, it's uh, there's two things. One is the I like very much the touch controls. Like uh -huh. I know I know it's perhaps it may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I really want you guys to try it when this comes out. I think it's very easy to make um, a very simple, very clear interface. So basically, all you do in this game, like 95% of the time, all you do is control the camera on the lower screen, uh -huh. shoot with the L button, and move the character with the analog stick. This is, Interesting. it's pretty much the majority of the game boils down to this. So it's, it's very easy to control. And I think that the, uh, the 3D on top, Again, I said that we don't have an overview map, yeah. so you have to rely on, on reading and exploring a 3D environment. So I think the 3D of the 3DS, um, aided by the, uh, the very colorful uh, American comic style, really makes the things kind of pop very well right. on, on the screen. So it, it helps with, uh, with reading the map and, and getting your bearings and, and coming up with a, with a plan of action. It, so that's it, why I thought of the 3D. For what you're saying too, you know, like, yeah, people would abuse the system, run around, run back, undo their yep. action. The camera becomes so important, right? Yes. And that's why, like, when you're watching the, the the footage on screen, you see it moving to the side, and people just trying to get a little bit of a glimpse around what's coming up yes. next. Yes, yes, yes. So, does your mind work in a different way than everyone else's? Like building a game like this, right, where you're you have to make the map and figure out where you're gonna have blind spots and hide and. Uh, what kind of creature you is your house just like scribblings on the wall of different maps you'd want or stuff like that? Do I look like that kind of person to you? A, a little bit. bit. A little <laughs> bit. <laughs> your bathroom mirror is all chalked up. <gasps> yeah, no, I think um, I have to say this was a, a team effort. So I got to say that I was the guy who said that we need a map. Yeah. yeah. And I was the guy who said, OK, if we don't have a map, let's have at least a compass on the top screen. I really fought for those. Yeah. But the people in the team, and especially Mr. Yamagami, our producer, said, well, Paul, this really, I mean, adding a mini-map really breaks what you set out to do with this. I mean, you said that you want to, to have the, you know, the camera and the, you know, the, the kind of like the, let's say, the visceral feeling of being on the battlefield. But then if you add a 2D map, then people will just end up just playing on that 2D map. You're destroying your own idea. Right. So um, it's through this collaborative effort that we actually came to the decision that we won't do any, we won't add any 2D crutches, so to say. We're going to do it all in 3D. So we're going we're gonna to focus on this multiple 3D viewpoint, um, very immediate, very intuitive style of gameplay. How long have you been working on the game? Very, very long time. Yeah. <laughs> so the process of making this game was actually quite involved in the sense that, um, so I have to tell you that the pretty much the first draft, so the, the first pitch was 2009. Wow. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Yes. <laughs> and for a very long time, we worked the game pretty much on paper. So once again, with Mr. Yamagami's team, um, we pretty much worked every single detail on paper. Then we went through a pretty long uh, prototyping phase. And then finally in 2012, we got a budget and we started like proper development in 2012. All right. So um, I really have to stress this, that we, we tried a lot of things. Like we tried many, many things. And uh, our publisher, so Nintendo and Mr. Yamagami, kind of played the uh, the role of, of an editor, so yeah, to yeah, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. because I just wanted to do everything, you know. I sure, just sure. <laughs> and uh, and at every step of the way, they were like, "Do you need this? Does this thing make sense in the context of your game? Does this make the game better? Yeah. Does this make the game more easy to understand? If the answer to these questions was no, then cut it. Not a bad idea. It's a good way to be. Yes, it was. You need those I mean, kind of people on a project like this, right? Yes. And it was a very grueling process for me, you know. It was uh, it was very frustrating at times, but it was also, uh, in the end, very liberating because it really allowed us to focus, to always, always focus on the essential. What is fun? Yeah. What is, um, you know, what is intuitive? What makes sense? Well, Paul, it looks great. Codename Steve. Thank you. When does it come out? 
It comes out sometimes in 2015. Okay. Well, it looks great. Thanks so much for coming by and showing Thank you very me. much for, for, giving, for giving us this opportunity. Oh, and my gosh. Please. It's our pleasure. This is what we do at you. IGN. We bring awesome-looking <laughs> games on and let people talk about them. And if you like that, don't go anywhere. More of that is coming up from here at E3.